and God bless you and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Bible Study. Today we are continuing a long study that we started in the book of Psalms. We started in June of 2022 and uh, as you can see from the, the picture that we have of our video that uh, we have definitely passed the mic over to the book of Psalms <laughs> and it is definitely speaking to us loud and clear. Okay, and so today we're going to go over Psalm 143. And this appears to be another psalm that's written by David. And it's like in collaboration with all of his other psalms where he was uh, basically writing about his experience he had with Saul. Saul and then um, many other enemies that he had and how the Lord delivered him from out of their hands and gave him victory over his enemies, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start with Psalm 143. It starts off, Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into ju judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has smitten my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Now listen, I have to stop right here and talk about this because this is David. This is an anointed man of God who once beat down one many enemies of the, you know, that were enemies of God. And this is the state of mind that he's in, okay? Because again, this is a song he's writing and this is his state of mind. Not really fully grasping the uh, true total concept of his, his uh, presence. But he's basically speaking from a flesh, a man point of view. Uh, because sometimes we do. And that's because we are, you know, uh, we're in the flesh here. But we are spirit in the flesh. Because he was definitely a mighty, a very mighty and very powerful man. And so, but this is what was going on with him. With, as far as like dealing with his enemies. You know, they were, they had persecuted him. And he was, he was feeling down. He was feeling down and out. So he, then he goes on to says, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. He's felt overwhelmed. Okay. The whole experience had gotten him so down and out. You know, and again, this is David. This man anointed, chosen by God to lead over his inheritance. To fight off many enemies of the Lord. He did. Goliath, you know, was, was one of his greatest victories that... You know, the story that became so legendary because this man was so, you know, tall. And he was from the, um, the enemy's camp, the Philistines. They were never for the house of God. They were never for Jacob, or the children of God, and never for God. And so, uh, but he beat them down. But this is where he was at, right here, at this particular point in time in his life. He was overwhelmed <laughs> because, you know, there were so many enemies that he had to fight. So he goes on to say, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all your work. I am amused of the, of the work of your hands. So he's talking about God because he's seen God do things through him. He knew and he knows what God can do. He knows how powerful God and almighty he is, you know, because his presence has been, you know, what he has been able to do. He realizes that it was God doing it through him. Okay. In smiting these, those enemies and, you know, beating down Goliath. He knows it wasn't done by his own hand. He knows that it was because of the help of the Almighty God. And he's acknowledging that right here. And he says, I stretch forth my hands to thee. My soul is thirsty after thee as a thirsty land. So now he's saying, I need that back again, Lord. He needs you to, you know, pull that back up out of him and go, you know, move it forward. Because he's feeling overwhelmed by all the enemies that he has previously gotten victory over. And still, you know, maybe the, he was dealing with some of them still currently around him. He says, hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit is failing. Hide not thy face from me, unless I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Okay, so he says, don't let me go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. For in thee have I put all my trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. 
Listen to that. He's lifted up his soul unto the Lord. I mean, hallelujah. You know, when you lift up someone to the Lord, hallelujah. Mm, mm, mm. Just like he said, I'm lifting. Oh, Jesus. He's just saying, I want you to take over this situation, whatever might be concerning me, you know, or whatever might be concerning that person if you lift them up to God. Okay? And then he says, verse 9, deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, for I flee unto you to hide me. Okay? Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. And then he goes on to say, revive me, quicken me. Lord, for my name, for your name's sake, for thy righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble, okay, so he's telling God, do this, if you don't feel like doing it because you want to do it for me, do it for the kingdom and for righteousness sake, you know, and for the victories that you have already done through me and that we continue to go forward and get victory, you know, David knew how to pray to the Lord, he really did, and we, like I've always said in the book of Psalms, as we started with this Bible study, we learn a lot from David. He's a great example God uses to give us so much instruction on prayer, petition, praise, worship, forgiveness, repentance. You know, he's a great person too. Um, he was a great Bible study person just to learn about his life in general. And so verse 12, the ending verse, it says, And of thy mercy, he says, put an end to my enemies. Now this is David. The anointed one chosen by God to lead victory over many, many times. He says, put an end to my enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. You know, because he was always walking in the will of God. He continually repented, you know, from things that he knew that he had done wrong. You know, and a perfect example was this experience with Bathsheba and um, when he, you know, had Solomon. Of course, and Solomon wrote the whole book of Proverbs. Solomon wrote the... Ecclesi no, not, was it Ecclesiastes? Song of Song, Song of Psalms. He wrote Proverbs. Um, did he write Ecclesiastes? I think. Let me see here. Yep, the Song of Solomon. Yep, is a love song. Well, the Song of Solomon. And then Ecclesiastes. I'm thinking. I know that was done by. A, I know Song of Solomon was, and then Proverbs. And so, uh, yeah. He was a preacher too, because this Ecclesiastes identifies him as the preacher. The words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. You know, so Solomon, even though, again, he was birthed through Bathsheba and David's lust, but God repented from that. I mean, J uh, David repented from that. Because he knew he was wrong in what he did, and he cried and he was sad about it. I mean, he knew he was wrong. You know, and it's one thing when you do something and you do it and you know you're wrong and you repent before God he knows your heart and you know you're repentant in your heart and that's how David was you know he was in alignment with the will of God and that, because and that's how he became like that because he was determined to be God's presence in the earth he was determined to so at times whenever he would drift away from that through by whatever you know deceitfulness because the enemy can deceive you into doing a lot of different things you may not ever want to be doing and we know that even from Paul saying you know though he want to do good you know evil is present and sometimes it might take over you know so but at the same time don't want to be a part of evil don't you know some people you don't want to find good and evil because that's not where it's at Okay, so anyway, getting back on point here with the Psalm 443, the verses we're going to elaborate on is, first of all, verse 3. When, uh, he says in verse 3, For the enemy has persecuted my soul. He has spent, me, spent my life down to the ground. He has made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Okay? And then another verse we're going to elaborate on is uh, 4, too. He said, Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. And then verse 9. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies, for I flee unto thee to hide me. Okay? So again, this is his powerful prayer and petition unto God. Now, if we go over to the book of 2 Samuel, which is where I'm led to, and chapter 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22 is David's prayer 
unto the Lord after the Lord had delivered him from all his enemies. Not some, but all of them. He gave him victory over all his enemies. Okay? So, as we go into 2 Psalm 22, and I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm just going to skip over certain verses. He says here in verse 1, it said, David spake unto the Lord the words of this song. In the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. Because, you know, again, as we went through the book of Psalms, we knew, we, uh, we went over uh, many, many times how Saul was a very big enemy to David in his life. Continuously stopping and hindering him and, you know, setting up traps for him. And he was, and they were both a part of the kingdom of God, okay? But however, you know, God gave David victory over Saul. And the fact that he even was able to prophesy his death and stating that he would die of a horrible, terrible death and by the enemy's hand. And that's how he died. You know, so because, you know, and he was able to do that because David stayed in the will of God and Saul had slipped out of the will of God. And so that's why it's how it's so important to stay in the will of God, stay in the love for one another in the kingdom. You know, don't become a Saul because that you become a Saul, you become a Saul and you'll be also given Saul's treatment, you know. So we want to make sure we stay in love like the Holy Father has decreed and declared for us to do. So other verses in this uh, 2 Samuel chapter 22 Verse 7, he said, In my distress I called upon the Lord and cried to my God, and he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. And when that happened, the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was angry. Okay? David recognizing, you know, the power that God had and how whenever his anointed has been uh, violated, when his anointed has been uh, persecuted, when his anointed has been trampled in, on, you know, this is the anger, this is how angry God becomes because of that, because in doing that, as we have said many times on this video, you're doing that to God, and that's what was going on with this whole, in, with this whole scenario, okay, where we talk about someone who's anointed and they're dealing with enemies it's all from the, the kingdom of darkness all from lucifer it's all from that spirit because god does not come up against himself okay he's not going to violate himself he's not going to persecute himself so it's from the kingdom of darkness okay so um let me see another verse in this second samuel chapter 22 mm -hmm. verse 26, with the mercy thou wilt show thyself merciful, and with the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the forward thou wilt show thyself unsavory. Okay? And that's how Saul had become an unsavory. He had become a forward and very devious person. And that was the reason why he entered into the treatment that he entered into from God. Okay, and so I'm going to stop right there with this book and that chapter. But you can go back and you can read 2 Samuel chapter 22 as a reference again to Psalm 143 and, and how David, once the Lord delivered him from all his enemies, and that is possible and that is what he does for us today as saints in the earth. He has delivered us. As we're already delivered. You know, once you come into the kingdom of God, once you have been born into the kingdom of God, once you have been covenant, covenant, put into the promise of the Heavenly Father, He has your deliverance. Okay? Deliverance is a package deal. It's part of the benefit. Because He says it in His Word also. That He will deliver us out of all our afflictions, all our troubles. That is a part of the beneficial package with the heavenly father because he is a deliverer so and he doesn't need to deliver us from him you know he needs to deliver us from the the enemy's tactics and the kingdom of darkness okay and in doing this bible study another book i'm led to is the book of ephesians 
okay when we actually break this down and take it on home because we want to make sure that we realize that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood you know it's not that's not the ultimate war that we're in it is a spiritual war it is a, a very spiritual war against good and evil against lucifer against the holy god of heaven against the kingdom of darkness against the good kingdom of heaven that is where initially the foundation of our war comes from and the fact that we become a part of god's kingdom we become celestial beings and we are no longer in the terrestrial the enemy doesn't like that okay we're no longer a part of what he can be you know we, we can be used by him we now belong to the glory of god okay so he the enemy does not he's not happy with that so we're led over to ephesians chapter 6 and we're going to start at verse 11 and hear what paul is saying to the ephesians uh just giving them edifying them and helping them to realize you know the same thing that we're saying right now about it's not a fight against flesh and blood but it's a spiritual warfare and he tells us to put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, be able to stand. And that's what, you know, David was able to do. He was able to stand because he did not bow down to the enemies of the, the, act, the tactics of the enemy. When it came to Saul, as we look at that as an example, Saul and the relationship David had with Saul and how Saul continuously tried to attack him and set traps to kill him, hurt him, harm him, set him in bondage that, he, you know, David refused to you know he refused to fight him back because he knew Saul had initially been a part of God's kingdom God had initially wanted him to walk in his glory but Saul could not get over that jealous and envious spirit and so therefore you know David had victory over him because God allowed it and not only that he placed himself in a position because he would not bow down to what the enemy was wanting him to bow down to do and that was to do something evil to god's anointed which is really god okay he didn't no 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 that's the key to it all okay so then he says verse 14 getting back to ephesians uh, chapter 6 he says verse 14 stand therefore having your loins girded about with the truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness which is your salvation in christ jesus and your feet shut with the preparation of the gospel of peace and above all taking the shield of faith you shall be able to quench the fiery darts of the wicked take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god okay praying always with all prayer and supplication in the holy spirit watching unto all with all perseverance and supplication for all saints you know always because again that's that was the victory that david had you know he was praying for saul <laughs> he was praying because and that's what the lord requires you know even as saul was being mean to him setting up traps because again david understood the plan of god he understood the union of god the kingdom of god that we were all you know we we're all in the body once you're a part of the kingdom of god we're all one of another David understood that and it was Saul's ignorance he didn't understand that okay and that's what uh, drew him to a very undelightful end okay so on that note that is going to conclude our Bible study for today Psalm 143 and a petition to the Heavenly Father uh, prayer for being overwhelmed you know whenever someone is overwhelmed by the tactics of the enemy right now heavenly father we would like to petition you O holy god of heaven in the mighty name of christ jesus for the saints that are standing in your will waiting on your move heavenly father give us more of your strength more of your power to endure heavenly father as we wait on your move heavenly father for we trust in you always and forever to do what you have decreed and declared you are going to do in your word holy god 
Hallelujah. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. God bless you. And I uh, will see you on the next Bible study as we continue to study the word of God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name.